for this example, ladies and gentlemen, basically what we need to do is now you guys can see we have some operations that are being applied to our absolute value, right? You can see my absolute value symbol is being multiplied by 2 and it's being added by 3. So the first thing we need to do is isolate the absolute value. We need to undo these operations. So just like you're solving an equation, undo the operations using your inverse operation or inverse um, yeah, operations. And we always use reverse order of operations, meaning we're going to undo adding and subtracting first. So therefore, I have 2 times absolute value of x plus 9 is equal to 4. Now, you can see my absolute value symbol is being multiplied by 2. So we undo multiplying by 2 by dividing by 2. So therefore, I have the absolute value of x plus 9 is equal to 2. Is everybody following me so far? That's just step one. That's all we've done so far. Yes? So when you divide it, you do uh, just the 2 and the x? Yeah, because think about it like this. If I had 2 times x equals 6, right? You just divide by 2, right? You're just dividing the 2's. x equals 3, right? So it doesn't matter if it's like the absolute value, 2 times the absolute value of 6. Okay. Right, you can't, the, remember, but it's not the distributor property. 2 is being multiplied by the absolute value of x, just like 2 is being multiplied by x. So when you divide by 2, it's still just going to undo each other. You're only, you're only undoing the multiplication of 2 by dividing by 2. So those will divide out. Does that make sense? Oh, I thought they were like different because of the absolute value. No, you're basically dividing everything by 2, but That's these two cool. only divide out. Um, we're not going to, yeah, remember, absolute value are not grouping symbols. So we're not going to multiply into them or, mul or divide into them. They are absolute, they represent absolute distance. They don't represent grouping symbols. Um, so just remember it because it gets really confusing because they look just like brackets, but they're not, they don't represent brackets. All right, so now we're going into step two create our two cases. First case is the positive solution, second case is the negative solution. Basically, again, guys, for this to equal 2, for the absolute value to equal 2, we need this to equal 2. We need to find the values for x that make that equal 2, as well as the values that make that equal negative 2. Does that make sense? So you set up two equations, this to equal 2 and this to equal negative 2. And then you just go ahead and solve. x equals negative 7, x equals negative 11. Now we go back and check our answer. Take negative 7. Oh, and the next thing. So which equation do you do? Do you go back to the original? Do you go back to the one where you undid a subtraction? Or do you go back to this one? In reality, it doesn't matter. My recommendation is to always go back and plug in your answers into the equation when your absolute value is isolated. So if you have an original problem where it's not isolated, use the equation to check your answer of the one that's isolated. And I'll explain in further detail next problem. So negative 7. Negative 7 plus 9 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Negative 11. Negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. They both check out. They work. Anybody have any questions regarding the process? No. Everybody feels good. Everybody wants to just start 